July the 28th, 2023. As I've had some questions about this comet that's headed towards the inner solar system, you've probably seen some of the headlines of the exploding comet or the horned comet, and I've seen a couple that it's headed towards Earth. Now, it's not directly headed towards our planet, but it is going to dive through the inner solar system between the orbit of Earth and Mercury. Very interesting. I'm going to show you the JPL models of that. Now, it, it won't really be a, what you call a close approach because the Earth will be on the opposite side of, like I said, this thing's going to dive between the orbits of Earth and Mercury. But Earth will be on the other side of the sun. You'll see when you see the diagram. So it's going to be about 1.6 AU away. Now, 1 AU is 93 million miles, so it's over that, uh, almost twice that. But anyway, that's what's exciting to me is it's be uh, going to become a naked eye object. The last time we had that, I think, was Comet Ison as far as something large enough to have a good visible um, w look at it. And they're amazing now. Hell's Bop Comet that came back, uh, what, about 25 or so years ago, maybe a little longer than that. It was large. It was fantastic as it traveled west from where we were at at night. It looked like it was following the sun, but it was large, and it was a beautiful sight to see. What you're looking at is are images uh, from Comet Chasers Project. And this was back in, I think, July, a couple of days ago, but... It says comet shaped like the Millennium Falcon. Until a few days ago, Comet 12P Ponds Brooks looked like a perfectly ordinary comet. Then something on its surface exploded. Now it resembles the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy, the Millennium Falcon. These images are hot off the press as of July the 25th, three days ago. It says from the Comet Chasers, a team of researchers led by Helen Usher of Cardiff, the Open Universities, they are using telescopes at the Los Cumbres Observatory Network to monitor this comet's unusual eruption. Now, we see this comet about every 70 or 71 years, and most of the time they see some type of explosion on it. And uh, I've been watching these for a long time, guys, and usually the closer they get to the sun, they're almost like their opposite polarity, and you'll start seeing things happen to the comet. Is it, the closer it gets... As in the comet I sun, it exploded into a million pieces, and as it fanned out, it was 40 million miles wide. It was an amazing uh, comet to watch. But it says uh, the action began on July 20th when the comet abruptly brightened a hundredfold. Astronomers watched as double plumes of debris streamed out of the comet's core, sweeping back to form the falcon shape. It is now shining with about the same brightness as an 11th magnitude star, making it an easy target for mid-sized backyard telescopes. That's now. It says Comet uh, Pons Brooks is famous for exploding, discovered in 1812 by Pons and discovered again in 1883 by Brooks. The bursty comet visits the inner solar system every 71 years. Since the 19th century, at least seven significant outbursts have been observed. Again, I think that's the close approach. As the astronomical station in Serbia, astronomers Igor Smolik and Marko Gordanovic took a closer look uh, using the station's big 1.4 meter telescope. Now, the some call it lack of volcanic explosion, but it's actually gas is trapped within the comet. And then when it gets exposed to the sun, as it rotates through and gets closer, some of that is blown back and then the gases escape. And that's what they're saying that we are seeing now in these two wings uh, is escaping gas. And that's why it brightens suddenly. They're saying this is a 60 by 30 exposure, says Smolik. It reveals the origin of the horns curving out of the comet's compact core. Richard Miles of the British Astronomical Association thinks a Toyopi may be one of 10 to 20 known comets with active ice volcanoes. The magma is a cold mixture of liquid hydrocarbons and dissolved gases, all trapped beneath a surface which has the consistency of wax. These bottled up volatiles love to explode when sunlight opens a fissure. The best may be yet to come. The comet is currently beyond the orbit of Mars, but falling toward the, the sun for a close encounter in April of 2024. At that time, it is expected to become a naked eye object at a fourth or fifth magnitude. The timing is, is significant because 12P will reach maximum brightness. Get this, 
only a few days before the total solar eclipse of April 8, 2024. Sky watchers in the path of totality could look up and see an outburst for themselves. Amateur astronomers are encouraged to monitor developments. Comet 12P is currently crossing the head of Draco, not far from the North Celestial Pole. Check out the horns and submit your photos here. Guys, we're looking at spaceweather.com. And notice you can click below this and you can look at different images from different folks. I think these are from the UK. Now let me show you something about space weather. Many of you know it, but just in case you don't and you want to come here and look at some of the other photos, let me show you the trick to doing this. Now this is the link. It's spaceweather.com. It's been on bpearthwatch.com for about 12 years or so. But if you notice the date, July 28, 2023, nothing's mentioned about the comets. Some other very fantastic images are there. But um, what you have to do is what they have their time machine. So come over here on the archives and go to the 25th when these images were taken and click view. Notice this will take you to what they call the spaceweather.com time machine. That goes back a couple days. Let me move this over and uh, here's your information so that's how you do it again just come over here click on the date uh, which is july 25th 2023 and click view and it's going to take you to this article that we're looking at and let's look at the jet propulsion laboratory models now let's take a look at that model what you're seeing is the ecliptic of the uh, solar system the sun's in the center different colors you've got neptune Uranus, uh, Saturn, Jupiter, all the way down. We're going to look at the inner solar system. But let me tilt it back up kind of towards what they call the ecliptic. And the white line indicates this 71-year orbit of uh, Comet 12P right there. Dives in every 71 years or so. But again, slightly different location each time. But now that's this is what we have. And there's a white dot right here. Is what you can tilt this any way you want to, 360 it any way you get into the inner solar system which red, uh, the red line is the orbit of Mars, and Mars is right here. Now the blue line is Earth, and Earth is right there. Then you've got Venus and Mercury. Now if I said in the beginning of the video that it was going to die between the orbit of Earth and Mercury, I meant the Earth and Venus. We'll look at it. And you can see where the line is as we pull this up. Again, the Earth's orbit is the blue line right here. Then you've got Venus and Mercury. Now, let me tilt it up, and you can see just a little better what I'm saying about it. It's very close to kind of halfway between those, and it's not going to reach here until March. We'll look at that as we progress it through time. But right now, the Earth is here. It's on the opposite side of the sun, and we'll kind of turn this sun facing. The Earth here, sun's there, and the uh, orbit is going to come over to the right as far as the way everything's set up now but as everything rotates in the solar system watch how this will change and what you can do at the top guys you can set this at one day six days three days whatever or six hours one day three days we'll set it at weeks and let's just advance it through time notice your time stamp will uh, change here and so that we can see it a little better i'm, I'm going to turn it back here back this up and show you as of today's date, Ponds Brooks is right here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but just above the name. And it's going to dive through like this. But let's go through and uh, step this forward. We're going uh, weeks at a time. Notice your time stamp at the bottom. We're into November. There's December, January, February, March, and then in April. We're getting very close. Check this out. 322 let's switch this back to one day this is just the way i do it you can do it any way you want and it's going to slow down your progression going up to about let's get a little closer here when it actually dives through but now guys here again it's going to become more and more visible as it gets closer and closer to this ecliptic we're now at march the 4th we'll keep stepping this thing through march uh the 8th right about there we're in the ecliptic march the 10th that's next year but all of a lot of this upper loop is going to become more and more visible again now by telescopes and then close to the naked eye and we've got that lunar eclipse that's coming through and notice where it dives through right about halfway like i said right there now because the earth is going to be not 
at this part of the orbit, notice it's way over here. It's telling us, and this is going to blow the tops off the heads of the flat earthers. So just, guys, put your hat on and hold on. But uh, at that point, it's going to be 1.6 AUs from the Earth. And that's as it's diving through. That's one of the closer points to the sun at uh, less than an AU. An AU is the distance between the Earth and the sun, which is an, an average of 93 million miles. Again, flat earthers don't freak out here. So that will the reason that it's that far, if the Earth is 1 AU from the sun, Notice that because it's diving in on the other side of the Earth from the sun here. So that's going to give you that distance of 1.6 AU. Then it's going to continue, guys. Just let it play forward into the out into the atmosphere again and uh, on its 71-year loop. Now let me say this. The closer these things get to the sun, they can speed up from a million miles a day to we saw iSun go from that to 11 million miles per day because of the getting closer to the center of gravity of the sun is pulling it in and I've seen these things disintegrate because you've got a lot of times you'll have the core the nuclei of the comet but some of the close-up images of other comets you could see three or four chunks inside that glowing uh, nucleus uh, and they're called multiple nuclei and that can tell you in advance will this be able to handle that speed up of a million miles a day to 11 meters, million miles a day in this slingshot approach. In other words, it slows down the further out it gets and starts diving back at speeds up. And right here is where we're seeing the most pressure. When ISUN came behind the sun and the scientists were saying it would hit the sun, that comet was so big, if it would have hit the sun, life would have been over as we know it. But that's what they were saying. But I could tell by the, uh, you, you can get deeper into the exact, date and time of the exact my or the AUs of everything but this is very close but uh, I said that it was going to split up because it had several nuclei like maybe seven or eight at one point as we looked very close at the infrared images and I knew they would not hold up to this slingshot effect it will be interesting if uh, we see anything like that with Pons Brooks it may be just the gas explosions as it gets closer and heats up but if it's going to do it as far as away as it is now, imagine what how bright it will become as it gets close. So that's something to look forward as we're coming out of winter. And But that's the close approach. But starting now, telescopes can see it. Again, look uh, at Draco and up north uh, towards the uh, north star, the celestial northern star. We're watching this, guys. Just a quick heads up. I think it's terribly interesting to me to watch these events uh, that our father created and watch how they all interact we're watching it guys you watch it it's a heads up be safe